What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Square back in another Squid Ale. Today, I want to talk to you guys about confidence in competitive Yu Gi Oh! This is a huge factor that I don't see a lot of people ever talking about, but this is one of the major things that you have to grasp if you ever want to do really well at a major event. You have to have a lot of confidence in yourself and in your playstyle. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just dive in. I've put together a series of slide decks to explain this in detail. If you guys want to check out the slides, they're available on the Patreon. Just check that link below in the description. Other than that, let's just dive right in. So starting off, what about confidence? Well, confidence is a big factor that, you know, a lot of people just don't really discuss. If you go to like Originals or YCS, a premier event, you'll notice like a lot of the pro or the better players who have tops, they always execute their plays in a certain way. They have like this kind of mesmerizing aura, like this very uh, aspect of confidence. Their plays are all just very, very clean. They're making their plays, you know, exactly what they're doing. They're not really stopping to think here and there, and then they're not going like, uh, and ah. They're really just getting down to the meat and potatoes, activating a card, using the card to search, using the card to resolve in any effect, and they kind of know like what they're doing all the time. They have this very, very intimidating aspect, and that is what I call confidence, I guess. You know, like more or less, it's just being confident. And your mindset is really, really imperative and important to minimizing misplays and making sure that you're playing to the utmost ability that you do. It's a lot different for a lot of players who actually just play all day at the comfort of their own room online, you know, on Dueling Book or a Master Duel. Whereas when they transition to a real life event, they suddenly realize, wow, there's a lot more to this than just playing cards and making sure the cards resolve, right? There's actually an aspect of the psychological game where you're sitting across the table from someone else and there's sort of like a push and pull between you, not just on the cards and the playing field, but also your demeanors and like how you act, your attitudes. And at the end of the day, this is very, very important. There are a lot of players that just transition to real life and kind of uh, do very poorly because they realize that there is that aspect of difference. There have been a lot of stories of players actually doing very well on Dueling Book, climbing very, very high on the ladder ranking chart, and then going to YCS and doing quite poorly because they're just not used to playing in real life. So not being confident in yourself and also your playstyle can lead to a lot of misplays. It can lead to you forgetting things like effects in the hand, graveyard, uh, forgetting hand traps. Like I've had uh, instances where, you know, I'm not really confident in my playstyle because I didn't play test for a long time or I was just starting out at the beginning of my dueling career and I always forget about certain hand traps or I would just like completely forget about a search or search the wrong card. A lot of times that can be chalked up to not being confident in your play and then, you know, you just start misplaying a lot. So how do we sort of build that confidence? Well, how do you become confident? It's not really something you can pick up immediately. It's very, very difficult, especially if you're just going to your first event. It all comes kind of with experience, right? Like just playing over and over, getting that muscle memory, getting your body acclimated to sit across the table from somebody else, and also with the stakes that are on board. You know, there's a ticking timer that's trickling down. You can't really slow play because you're playing against a real person. Uh, you don't have like 20 people in your ear on a Discord call like a lot of people do in the Ironmans online. Nope, it's just you and the opponent, and then there's some cards on the table and you're sort of playing that out. So you really, really have to just throw yourself in that type of situation, that high pressure environment, over and over again until you start getting comfortable. So getting comfortable, I would say, is the first step. Now, how you can get comfortable is obviously getting very, very familiar with the game itself, right? So playtesting as much as you can, not just in person, but also online. So you get the format down, you grasp the uh, ins and outs of your deck, as well as all the decks in the metagame. So when you play against another deck, you know kind of what the niche scenarios are. You know like these specific interactions, you know when to use your hand traps against your choke points, and you're not actually thinking. Uh, you're instead just being able to confidently activate a card because you know this play will lead to uh, X, Y, or Z. And depending on what they do, you can just adapt to that, right? So just Muscle memory is really, really important. Uh, I would definitely recommend playtesting with people who are slightly better than you. So yeah, if you know somebody or your locals that has some tops, you could uh, strike up a conversation with them. And uh, half the time, they'll be very, very accommodating because there are a lot of nice players, especially the ones that are successful in the game, tend to be quite uh, nice as long as you're talking to someone who's respectful, right? So they'll definitely be able to playtest with you. Um, also playing high rank dueling book is great for this. I know a lot of dueling book gets black for, you know, players just like stalling and calling for judges and trolling. But but once you get to the higher levels, it gets a lot better. So I'm talking about like maybe like between 800 to like 1300 plus rating, uh, trying to get to a thousand as quick as possible and then playing good people. From there, you can kind of treat it like a real tournament and you get good fast. Not a lot of people take advantage of Dueling Book, but I'm telling you guys now, this is how I got good as a player by playing on Dueling Network and Dueling Book and just over and over grinding and also play testing with my friends. So this allows you to kind of learn specific interactions more frequently that come up in testing. You can uh, quickly become 
second nature to you, so you know exactly how to use cards, how to play cards, and there are only so many interactions in a format between the decks. At some point, you will actually have them nailed down by heart, and that's kind of what you want to aim to when you do enter a premier event, is that you have a solid understanding and a foundation of all the scenarios that come up. Uh, next is something that I thought was really cool, I'd include in here, it's called the substitution technique. So this is something that a lot of actors use when they're acting to kind of replace uh, an element or an emotion of a character that they're playing with something equivalent from their life. So, for example, if there is an actor who's playing a character whose uh, brother died, and he's never had a brother die in real life, but he had a dog die, so he can kind of use that uh, emotion, that sadness from there to replace that with the scene. So uh, it's a little bit out there, but uh, how it applies to Yu-Gi-Oh! is if you don't feel confident in playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, you could use another aspect of your life where you actually are confident and kind of uh, adopt that mindset, kind of get in that same flow as if you were doing that thing. So for example, if you're good at a sport, right? Like maybe you played basketball or hockey or soccer and you're really, really good at that and you're confident when you do step on the field or the ice, you can kind of use that. Imagine as if you were stepping on to play a hockey game and then use that when you're playing. It's as if, you know, you are that hockey player that's very, very accomplished and good at the sport playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So that really, really helps. Uh, if you don't have like an athletic thing in mind, maybe something with your role at work. Uh, if you're a very, very established software engineer, maybe you can use that uh, experience that you have and the confidence as if, you know, somebody would come up to you and ask you for help. How would you help them? You'd probably be very, very confident about going through the steps and teaching them with that role, right? So uh, that type of thing in mind, it doesn't have to be necessarily a sport or a role. It can be anything that you're good at and you would be confident in doing. You know, some people are good at knitting as well. That's another thing. Just try to picture yourself as if you're in that environment and then leverage that same confidence when you do play Yu-Gi-Oh! I find that helps a lot. Having a, a solid mindset, thinking that you're one of the best players in the room, right? Like you don't have to be necessarily the best player, but you have to keep telling yourself, like I'm one of the best players in the room. I have one of the best decks. I trained, I put in a lot of time for this and now I have to uh, use that to win, right? So just having that mindset is really, really important. And I find having a substitution really helps with that, especially if you're newer on to bigger events and you don't really have that aspect of confidence developed from uh, experience so far. Now, if you don't have any personal experiences, you can also pretend, right? Like we just talked about telling yourself over and over that you're one of the best players in the room. Just keep telling yourself and sooner or later, it will actually make a big impact. Or better yet, can you think about a character from like an anime or a TV show that you know who has like a certain attitude, who's very, very fresh in your mind that you can think about? You can almost pretend as if you were them or pretend what would they do in like a Yu-Gi-Oh scenario? If they were playing Yu-Gi-Oh, how would they act? Try to adopt that internally and that really, really helps. Now, I know this sounds a little bit like mumbo jumbo but trust me guys this is really really important to have a good mindset when you do play because that will allow you to stay focused and uh just strapped in the duel and concentrated that's what we're looking for here the key word is being confident and concentrating on the duel so controlling your nerves obviously let's say you enter one of your first ycs's or regionals and after winning a few rounds you see the pairings and you realize wow my opponent is a well-known player i've seen this name before he has tops maybe some ycs wins oh crap what do i do you know the sweat is already running down your brow before you even sit in your chair well the natural reaction obviously yeah we get nervous but you have to do everything you can to hold your composure which is why we've previously just talked about things like substitution just holding yourself in place make sure that you're focused and you're not you know, you're not distracted, you're not affected by something outside of the game. You're not intimidated by your opponent, which is easier said than done, but you absolutely have to keep telling yourself and focusing on the game. Playing the board is one of the things that I always tell people who are kind of uh, newer to this. Just focus on the cards. Don't focus on your opponent at all. Just 100% focus on the cards in the graveyard, hand, field, on the entire playing mat. That's all you need to worry about. Don't worry about the other player. Now, obviously when you have some experience, looking at the other player, reading their physical expressions, reading the signs can help a lot of the times. So if you can catch like a uh, recurring thing that they're doing, it's a lot like in poker. You can sometimes read them directly by looking at the expression. But if you're kind of newer on and you have some nerves or you're playing a big known, big name player, then definitely just try to focus on the board. That's the most important thing. As if you're playing online at home or something against a nameless, faceless opponent, just focus on the card. Now, another thing you can also do is capitalize on their misplays because even the best players, like the players who have wins and tops and whatever, like world champions, they still make misplays. They, they're they all human at the end of the day. This game is very, very complex and there are a lot of things on the on the line, right? There's a lot of uh, endurance, an aspect of endurance. People are very, very tired throughout the day. Maybe they didn't get a lot of sleep. 
Well, sooner or later, people will misplay. And if they do misplay, you can kind of use this to leverage and boost your own confidence, knowing that they're human and they make mistakes, right? Like when one of my opponents who are very, very good in the top cup of YCS make a mistake, it gives me a boost of confidence knowing that, yeah, these guys are probably a little nervous as well. And I can use that to my advantage by, you know, capitalizing on the fact that they're gonna misplay and, you know, not misplay on my end so I can start winning, right? So recognizing that helps a lot and just look for places where they might misplay and you're like, oh crap, they really just misplayed there. I think I can take advantage of this and just uh, be really confident on my turn so I can start winning. Next is the it factor. So this is something that I kind of came up with, but you might notice pro players at events, they often are very, very serious and kind of lock themselves in to their seat when the duel begins. It might be a little chatty before the game starts, you know, ask you where you're from, ask you how your day, how your rounds went. But as soon as the timer starts, as soon as the judge says you have 45 minutes, you may begin, they instantly become 100% focused on the duel. There's no chatter. They're just straight faced. They're not making a lot of jokes. Very, very focused on the game, which is exactly what we just talked about, you know, focusing on the board. This is what a lot of the good players do. They 100% can divert their focus to what needs to be focused on, and that's the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and not being distracted by anything else, not being distracted by their opponent, just purely focused on the plays because this needs a lot of brain power for you to concentrate. And I call that the it factor. So if you can get the it factor and you can master being confident, that's all you really need. Just focus yourself in. Don't make any jokes, you know, don't banter or anything. Focus completely on the game. I find sometimes when I sometimes make jokes throughout the game, I kind of soften up a little bit and then I start misplaying, right? So making sure you're strapped in as if you're almost like writing like a midterm or like a final exam. You're 100% focused and just using every inch of brain power you possibly can. Creating a testing circle is really, really important, I think, to get better at the game in general and to be more confident. If you have a small circle of good players around you, just try to build like some rapport with them. Maybe you guys can go to events and travel together, build like a small Discord channel or a group chat. This is really, really helpful. Now, obviously you can test with each other, but you can also bounce ideas and secret texts and strategies. I find this is really, really nice. Like it's a lot like how some developers, I know they talk to a rubber ducky. It's like something to uh, rebound your, your thoughts and also get some feedback on. On, and this really, really helps me especially. I've had events where I just bounce feedback off of my testing partners and my friends. We don't really test a lot because we don't have a lot of time. We have other obligations, but when it comes to the event, we still do well because we're able to theory very, very strongly uh, with each other and hold each other accountable. And especially when we give each other like bad suggestions and you're like, yeah, yeah no, this is not a real thing. Let's stay track. Let's stay focused and try to play the best decks instead of playing like a tier three deck that we think is cute. Make sure that your testing circle ideally has players that are slightly better than you or close to the same skill level because that's how you get better, right? Having people that are slightly better uh, on different days, you know, and you can help boost each other up. Be careful of what I call cabin fever. It's when you have a group of players who are not as experienced and then you end up sharing strategies that you guys are so confident are gonna be good, but they don't necessarily hold up to the actual meta game. So yeah, that's just one thing to be alert of. And uh, watch out for players who try to avoid the meta. You know, they're uh, just very, very anti-meta. They like to play kind of the pet decks that they have. I'm not necessarily saying that all players that do that are uh, not as competitive at the game, but from what I found, you know, you have to have an open mind and be able to uh, consider at least playing the tier one decks if you do want to do very well at an event, obviously, right? So, yeah. And yeah, summary, long story short, you know, confidence is super important, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Try to play as much as possible so you do develop that muscle memory in your body and your mind is used to that high pressure intensity situation in person. Don't get intimidated when you're playing known players. They're human, they make mistakes as well. Just play the board to the best of your ability and then try to recognize your own mistakes. You can use Dueling Book to review your replays. You can share them with your testing circle as well to see how you could have played better. There's always something you can do better. I roll up to a YCS and I feel like almost every round is winnable because uh, some players will misplay, whether that's you or your opponent, but as long as you minimize misplays, you're probably gonna win. And then of course, try to create a circle of friends or local players you can play test in theory with. So yeah, that's about it. Guys, what do you think about this? Let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts. Again, you can get the slides on Patreon if you want to check that out. Guys, check out the Squiddy store. We have some cool merch available for you guys. Um, also, yeah, that's about it, the Patreon. And if you want to contact me, you can do so at any of these links. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.